you do want to find somebody that can have a healthy balance between loving you and spending time with their family, spending time with their friends, and most importantly, spending time with themselves. themselves. It's important for us as people to be able to recognize that our partners are important, but it's also important for us to be independent. I like how the minute I mentioned Paul and Morgan, chat just gets upset. They're just like, no, how dare you? Paul and Morgan, absolutely not. Don't you dare. That would be awful. That would be terrible. And yes, you're right. It would be. But let's get into the fan art section first, and then we can get into uh, all of that. This one is from Dog 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 Dog. Um, I, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that are written here about winter and warm baths and stuff. I'm just going to let you look at this image because I don't want to read the book here. You can read it. You can see what it means. And uh, we can move on to the next one. This one's from Mathematical Cabbage. Dunno, still in an art funk, but these quick little doodles are decent. Also, I will always draw Cirrus in socks and tights that are too small for the artsy thigh squish. Especially if you're drawing like Slime Girl Cirrus, you can have a very exaggerated slime squish, uh, sl thigh, thigh squish, thigh slime squish. Anyways, as always, thank you all for the fan art. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into things after you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. Their video is called Six Non-Negotiables in Christian Dating. These are things that they advocate for uh, themselves, but also things that they think that other people should be advocating for in their relationships. So let's go ahead and take a listen. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. Mm, in today's video, six non-negotiables in Christian dating. Morgan, I was going through and I was like, man, I got some good ones. And then I hear you over here saying that yours might even be two. What do you call it? Well, I said some people might think that my non-negotiables are kind of harsh. Kind of harsh. So I think together <clears throat> we can hash this out. Are you going maybe a little overboard or are yours right on? I'm excited. I am very excited for today's video. Let's do this. I'm excited too. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe because- Or don't do that or subscribe to me instead. That's you got guys. it, baby. you got it. All right, guys, Um, I wanted to say real quick, we had a patron Zoom call the day before yesterday, right? Yeah, and I just- really was blessed by it so yeah. shout out to our patrons thank you guys really good time. yeah seriously thank you all for the support that you give morgan and i you guys mean a ton to us and um just what we're doing here online and on this channel you're a blessing mm -hmm. and morgan just posted today the patron details for the retreat coming up in march in the beautiful sunny florida hopefully it'll be sunny while we're there i'm banking I've heard it. That it, it will be so I, we'll all right but the details are there we would love to have any of you guys um if i i don't need to hear about their meet and greet i want to get to their content I just hit them with a heavy hitter hit them go ahead all go right. ahead why not Number one. Number one of, what are we calling it? And this um, is your first non-negotiable when it comes to Christian dating. Yes. Yeah. All right. To each his own, okay? <laughs> Number one. First non-negotiable is they have- I like how it's to each his own, but they're running a channel where they literally tell people how to live their lives in a way that they think would be better for them. I don't know. Let's continue. I had not looked at P-O-R-N in three- per Porn. Porn. Just, just say porn. It's fine. You can say porn. The word porn isn't banned. You, you can say it. Preferably five years. Preferably never. <laughs> years. Years. <laughs> years. Okay, so... Talk, talk us through that, because I'm, I'm genuinely like, whoa, three to five years. Yes, three to five years. I applaud. She wants somebody to have not watched porn in the last three or five years. What? What? Okay, so... Can I, can I just go ahead and say, guys, watching porn is a perfectly natural thing to do. There's nothing wrong with it. The industry itself is a little farked up well more than a little farked up but actually just watching a pair of people fucking on a screen so that you can get off there's nothing inherently harmful about that as long as you can control any addictions that might come up from it um tega thank you very much for naming your points for an oh well not, and also an uh, 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 you fucking be gen but said support independent corn creators yep Let's go ahead and continue on with the episode, though. I uh, I feel like not wanting somebody to have watched porn in the last, like, three to five years is really, really manipulative. Like, how... I understand from a religious perspective the the want, some, uh, the want for somebody to be, like, pure and clean and what have you. But, Morgan, you have to think. If somebody is single, there is no downside to them just watching porn. 
And if they're meeting you, guess what? They are probably single and therefore have probably watched porn. Not that, but is that... <laughs> I mean, there are going to be so many that watch this and they're like, uh, the guy I'm dating looked at it a month ago. Mm -hmm. Now, go ahead, just talk to us. Right, so if you are in that situation, listen, you got to decide what you are willing to take on, what burdens you're willing to take on for the person that you are dating, slash possibly engaged to, going to marry, whatever. Like, if you are prepared to take that on, that burden, and it is a burden, that burden, oh, it's slash a burden all right. struggle. It's, it's not a burden, though. Your partner watching porn is only a burden if you treat it that way. If your partner watches porn and you just accept that that's a thing that they do and they still love you, like they literally just use the porn to get off. I, I think they're reading all porn the same, Hermit Electric and, and Old School. I don't think they make a difference between 3D and 2D. But regardless, porn consumption, your partner consuming porn, that is only a burden if you and your partner make it so. If that porn is an addiction that your partner suffers from, then yeah, it's probably a burden. If that porn is something that makes you personally insecure, then that's probably a burden. But just in general, having that as like a blanket thing, I, no, it's not a burden you have to take on in 99% of scenarios on that's up to you and the lord like that's between you and god i personally was not down to mess around with that i was just like no um so so if i had come on our first date because here's kind of where i might push back a little bit and you guys let us know in the comments seriously let us know what your thoughts are yes my thinking is this if i had come to you it's date number one and you end up asking me because I, I think that's a fair question maybe hold off on asking in the very first date but <laughs> early on in dating hey paul like i just want to know what's your relationship with the por and like if i had said well i haven't looked at it in three months, and I'm being really vigilant. Mm -hmm. Would your mind have gone to, sorry, we need to, it, I, you need to, to go three years before mm -hmm, we can yeah. work? <laughs> I don't know. Like, obviously, it's hard to say because. If you don't know, then this isn't a non negotiable. This is a series about non negotiables in Christian dating. Obviously, this is a negotiable then for you. If I had like fallen in love with you, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, really, I think what would be a non negotiable is like, if he said, well, I just looked at it three months ago, but here's what I have in place. And he told me the things that he had in place and it was very obvious that he was sticking to those things. Honestly, three months, I would have been like, no. You need more time to prove yeah. yourself. If he said a year. You, you need more time to prove yourself. Three months being clean of the porn is not enough time to prove yourself. There's nothing wrong with watching porn with your partner either. Like that can give you some ideas. Porn may be unrealistic, but it can give you ideas of things to try. I would have been like, okay. We can work with this. So you're kind of shortening your time a little bit. If the guy is, is yeah. shown, I'm intentional about not, I'm not messing around. I have a game plan. Yeah. Here's my accountability partner. Here's what I have on my computer screens. Yeah, that night, if he had told me that and he took me to go see a movie and it was PG-13, but there was a sex scene in it and he didn't even look away at all. Or like what, he just took but, me to that movie. I'd be like, no. <laughs> Wait, okay. really? It, you would you would literally leave if a sex scene happened in the movie and the person just didn't turn away? Like if they didn't just hide their eyes? Ah. Oh. It's so dirty. I must avert my gaze from the PG-13 prom. <sighs> oh, my God. We're the snowflakes, though, right? We're supposed to be the snowflakes. Okay, I, Morgan, I respect that. Even though I if, don't. if I were I think that's the one stupid. given my time frame, I might say, you know, three months, mm -hmm. but he has a strong game plan. And he, I would maybe say a little longer, like six months. Yeah. Three years is pretty intense. A year, I, you guys, I, I agree with Morgan. You're going to have to use your discretion on that, but I would say give it a chunk of time to show that the guy or the girl, but more likely the guy has proven himself that he's not a slave to this crap because it will yeah. be so difficult on yeah. your marriage. Yep. All right, Morgan, you did start off with a bang. My first one, my first non-negotiable in Christian dating okay. is they must be dating to marry and not be dating with no end game. No, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say no as well. The idea that dating can only be for marriage is, in my opinion, not a smart plan. You set yourself up more often than not when you do that to be upset if the person that you are with is not on the same page as you about that. It's okay to date just for the purposes of sleeping together. It's okay to date and just establish a very strong friendship. It's okay to date and a variety of things come from that scenario, not just marriage. Not to mention putting all of that Putting all of that weight on marriage specifically bothers me. Marriage is just a long-term relationship that you've put a legal document on. Yeah, dating, I, I do agree with Specious, dating should be for getting to know someone, not just marriage. Slash time frame. And I, I just can picture in my mind, you go to date somebody, maybe you met them online, and they're just saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm dating casually. Mm -hmm. Or, I, you know, I'm not sure when I'm going to get married. To me, mm-mm. 
this is a non-negotiable. You talk with them and, and uh -huh. granted, we had kind of a, we, we didn't do amazing in this area. You, I guess you didn't. I mean, yay, congratulations. All of the non-negotiables you've had have been things that you haven't actually done. Like, don't you like how these non-negotiables are things they didn't do? They're things they didn't abide by. They are realistic things they, they would want that neither of them could do or did do. Look at this list of non-negotiables that were all incredibly fucking negotiable. So I don't think they know. I don't think they know what non-negotiable means. I, I don't. I don't. You do amazing. Yeah. But all in all, so, so maybe I'm being. Well, I am I being pretty, hypocritical? Well, I think pretty quickly. Yeah. You recognize, okay, she is dating to marry. Like she's not like. Right. Because if, know, if talking to five guys. And... What we're saying is Morgan kind of on our first date was. <laughs> I asked him why he was on Tinder and he was like, "Well, I'm looking for a wife." And I started cracking up and I was like, "Oh, well, you're looking in the wrong place." And then he was like, "Well, I intend to get married very soon." And I was like, "Well, I don't." <laughs> if. Uh... Well, I intend to get married. Very... What the fuck? <laughs> I intend to get married very soon is like the first thing you say on a Tinder profile? Oh no. I would call that a red flag, but okay. A month into our dating, it was clear like, oh, Morgan is, she does not see herself getting married in the next two years, three years. Mm -hmm. I would have been out. I'm just being honest, like I would have been out. But like you said, once you kind of peeled <laughs> past the uh, harder exterior, yes. it was like, okay, this woman really is. Yes, I was like an onion. I had many layers. You have many layers, yes. Yeah, but guys, seriously, like that's that's a big one, and that so often leads. To I'm I'm sorry. I just I just can't advocate for this. The idea that you should get married early in your relationship, that you should get married super early on, that you should be focusing on that. It, it, I I feel like that leads to people not only having terrible relationships, but it also leads to people having. Uh, it's just a fucking terrible financial decision at that point. Being with somebody for multiple years and then making the decision to marry them is just putting a, a legal label on a relationship that has already been operating because you recognize from that many years that you're okay with that person. You're okay with being with them. You're okay with how things feel between you and them. But jumping the gun like that, I just don't, I don't agree with. I have one big question. Why the hell did she swipe right on him if uh, they had different ideas of what they each wanted to get into? I mean, Jassa, a lot of times on on Tinder, you swipe right on people just because they look sexy. Like, most, most people are not reading the whole Tinder profile before swiping. Most people are looking at the first picture, maybe even the first couple, and then swiping based on that. That would be why. That'd be why. To sexual compromise. Because you, date, you do really love this person, they love you, but there's no intention of getting married in the next year. Yeah. There's no intention of, who knows, marriage? Sure, maybe, maybe. Yeah, and that's a healthy thing to do. Marriage, sure, maybe, is the healthy response. Mm -hmm. And then it stretches on, you get more physical, you compromise, you lose your sexual purity. Five years go by and suddenly you're like... Sexual purity is a thing you made up, though. Nobody gives a fuck about your sexual purity except you. I'm sorry, the idea that one's sexual purity is even remotely important is just... It's, it's ludicrous to me. The worth we put on virginity and then the ways we make fun of virginity simultaneously are just ludicrous. What am I doing here? Yeah. I wanted to get married. I wanted to have a Christian dating relationship and that's down the tubes. Yep. You guys get me. All right, all right, let's go. All right, next one is non-negotiable. Again, I feel like people are gonna think that I'm harsh, but whatever. Okay, well, I might be able to. I wanted to see soften it. that this person had a good community. You can tell a lot about a person by their community, even if it's literally just their family is their community. Um, so if somebody has a broken home, you wouldn't date them? But yeah, I wanted to see his relationships with the people around him. If he was like a total loner, didn't have like any friends, his family he was distant with, like that would have been a major red flag to me. I mean, I could understand that being a red flag, but at the same time, that could just mean that somebody grew up in an abusive household. They were in an abusive situation. Like you could have just as easily discovered a victim as fast as, you, as you've discovered somebody who you, you think this is a red flag for. And I would have kind of probably been out <laughs> because I had had experiences in the past where guys that I dated did not have good community or their friends were just total garbage. And I was just like, okay, you act one way with me, but then you act a totally different way with your friends. Like, I wanna know, do you act the same when you're with your friends, when you're with me? Um, so most people act differently depending on the social groups that they're in. That's actually a perfectly normal thing that happens. People will act one way with their spouse and one way with their friends, one way with their coworkers and one way with their family. People wear masks. That is a normal thing that people do. 
There's a version of me that you guys see when I'm doing my streams that is a much more exaggerated version of myself that doesn't come out as much when I'm out with friends and family. Uh, whereas when I'm out with friends, there's a way that I'll operate with my friends if a partner is present and a way that I'll operate with my friends when a partner is not present. They are largely the same, but much like with the exaggeration of an online persona, there are subtle differences between them. So, I don't know, this this idea that, oh, well, if he if he acts differently in other scenarios, uh, then get away from him. Like, no, if he acts differently in other scenarios, that just means he's a human being who's had to chameleonize like everybody, every other human being who's ever existed. Yeah, so that, that was a really big one for me. And, yeah, so what are their friends? What's their friend group like? Really big, but also kind of like you said, and it sounded a little mean the way you said it, like if they're a total loner. Because some, some guys, like... Or, you know, or girls, they can be trying to find a community, and for seasons they might be a little bit more of a loner, but mm -hmm. all in all, I, I agree with you, if the person that you're dating is a loner, suddenly you become their whole world, and yeah. you suddenly, like, they are, they need you. Yeah, well, again, yeah, that's a big issue. Like, you should, your guy shouldn't, like, desperately need you all the time. Like, you want him to be independent. All right, so, this part I agree with. I actually agree with this part. You do want to find somebody that can have a healthy balance between loving you and spending time with their family, spending time with their friends, and most importantly, spending time with themselves. It's important for us as people to be able to recognize that our partners are important, but it's also important for us to be independent. It's also important for our partners to be somewhat independent. It's important for no matter what gender you are, it is important to be able to function alone just as much as you would be able to function in a group or with your partner. I, I, I'm not going to be contrarian about everything they say. If they say something I agree with, I'm going to agree with them. And you should be independent. Y'all don't need to be like... All right, I'm, Morgan, I respect it. I respect <laughs> your number two non-negotiable. Thank you. So far in the comments, you guys, has Morgan been too harsh with her non-negotiables? <laughs> Seriously, let us know. Because I do want the dialogue in the comments to be beneficial for people in the dating phase. Okay. This doesn't mean that this person has to be like a hardcore extrovert, blah, blah, blah. But like, once again, like I said, this could even be with his family. Like, how are his relationships with his parents? And obviously there are circumstances where like, say your parents cut you off because they're atheists and you're a believer. Like, I don't know. There could I like how that's the thing that would cut them off. Like that, I, I don't think that atheistic parents cut off Christian children as often as Christian parents cut off atheistic children. I'm sorry. I like how abuse was not the first thing that was thought about. It was religion. That that would be a red flag to me. Could be situations like that. And that would, obviously I would, you know, find understanding for that. But all in all, like, I don't know. To me, it just seems super sketchy if a guy has no community right, whatsoever. Right, it's right. not like plugged into a church or whatever. Art, art, art. Okay, so Morgan, I'm, go figure, I'm piggybacking off of you because my next non-negotiable I put is they must be attending church regularly. No, let's hear the logic behind it, but I just feel like that tells you a lot. Yes. It tells you that they're serious about their Christian faith. Mm -hmm. It tells you that they are looking to be encouraged and built up by other believers, which is a huge part of the Christian life, mm -hmm. and that they're looking to, to build other believers up. Like it is so communal, so piggybacking on that you're looking at the community that community they have, mm -hmm. are they going to church regularly? And I guess it's better than nothing if you go out on a first date and they say, yeah, I'm not. Okay, so here's the thing. You can be a Christian without going to church. You can easily be a Christian without attending church. Christianity, and I, I'm an atheist, but I used to be Christian. I was a Christian for 18 years. So I'm perfectly willing to step into those shoes and point out that Christianity is supposed to be about a, 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 a personal relationship with you and your God. That's what it's supposed to be. Christianity is about your personal journey with Jesus. The church, by and large, is supposed to be a non-factor in Christianity. After all, what's the nomenclature? It's relationship, not religion. Asking somebody to be part of the religion and not part of the relationship of the Christian faith feels kind of backwards to me as somebody who used to be a Christian. I could sit here and laugh at you from an atheist perspective and go, that's stupid. Why would you want somebody to get lied to from the pulpit every day? I could do that. But I think it's a lot better in these situations to take on the persona of the person who you are trying to argue against, slip into their shoes. Okay, well, were I Christian, how would I feel? And I find myself disagreeing. I don't go every week, but I do try to go and maybe they go like every yeah. other week. But even that is like, I, I would encourage you guys pull back and see, are they committed mm -hmm. to the body of Christ and going to church? Church is just a, it's just a big deal. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a, and it's not even just like, oh, 
go you must go sit at the 10 a.m service every sunday like it's okay if you miss here and there whatever but like is it more so a routine that you are going and you are connecting with the people there and pouring into um the people there yeah do not uh forsake, forsake the meeting of the brethren to me it just shows that they're serious about their faith like more than anything mm -hmm. sorry i'm whatever. gonna I'm going to sit in the middle of my, my, my old school Christian shoes for this for as long as I have to. Your relationship with Christ is the thing that's supposed to be important. Whatever their, their church situation looks like, are they attending? Are they committed yeah. to a church body? Yeah. To a local church body? All right. My what about an online church? Would, would you have a problem with an online church that hosts via Zoom? My next one. Again, these are all very much like my non-negotiables. Okay, so the, so I'm not saying, saying like these should be your non-negotiables. But that's kind of the, like the intent yeah. of this video was. You know, take it. <laughs> I like how these shouldn't be your non-negotiables. Ah, but that was the intent of this video. Nobody speaks facts into the A there. I just want you to know that. Nobody says things for the purpose of just saying them. There's always an intent behind it. Even people who say, well, I just said that to say it. No, you didn't. There was a reaction you were looking for, or there was a a thing you were looking to gain, or there was something you were looking for. If you literally just enjoy sowing chaos, then you didn't do that for nothing. You did it to sow chaos. We all do things for a reason. Nobody is an unmotivated actor. So when Paul and Morgan sit here and try to say, well, uh, this wasn't to tell you that these should be non-negotiables for you, don't lie to us, guys. The purpose of this is to try to give instruction to other people who you think are believers who need to be listening to the things you say. It or leave it, but I think that what we're sharing is good for everyone to consider, I at think least think about. everyone that we've said so far, mm -hmm. like, to me, if you're ignoring any of these that we've shared, that would be a concern to me. <laughs> but And there it is. Morgan trying to go, no, it's okay if you don't have these, and Paul just going, no, no, it's not okay. And I will let you know that. Yes, they, these could, I mean, obviously. I mean, the community one, like, I could see some people being like, I don't think it's that big of a deal if he doesn't have a ton of friends or blah, blah, blah. You all may not have these as a big a deal to you as they are to us, but I would, so far, at least so far, say, like, these are these are pretty stinking solid. All right, my next one is, he was ready and willing to be the sole provider of our house so that I could be a stay-at-home mom full-time. Wow. No, 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 no. I'm going to call that one just a giant fucking red flag. If somebody... If somebody said that to me, my immediate reaction would be, oh, so this conversation's over. You're not willing to provide for yourself. You're not willing to operate independently. You are you want to be reliant on me? <laughs> Get out and also please pay for your half of the check. Go. Like, I, 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 I no, I don't. I don't agree with this. I think you and your partner should have the agreement after the fact. I think you and your partner should be able to be independent financially. You'll be much safer if that is the case. Wow. So no <laughs> feminism going on in this household. No, I did not. No feminism. Yeah, that, that whole right to vote thing? Chuck that out the window. The thought of meeting a guy and him telling me like, yeah, I want you to work for, you know, at least 10 years, 15 years, like whatever. And then we can discuss like, no, I wanted him to be like, hey, as soon as we have kids, you're going to be at home with the kids and I will be the provider. Like I wanted him to tell me that and desire that because that's what I deeply desired and wanted and thought it was so important for me to be a stay at home mom. So I would say that one would be a little bit more of a gray area. And you admit it, like yes. this is something very specific to you Yes. because I could see some women saying like, oh, I, I want to have even, come on, like, I want to have at least a part-time job. I want to be at least mm -hmm. maybe working from home yeah. on some level. So, yes. but yeah, no, I respect that. I, I don't. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that's a thing, but you don't walk in with the expectation of burdening a, a potential future partner with that. I, I'm sorry, no. I, I, I agree more with Paul here. Like, it would be better for a myriad of reasons for your partner to be able to provide for themselves, even in just a small capacity. Children are expensive. It's more and more expensive every single year to try to raise and maintain a family, and wages don't go up in proximity to that. They just don't. All right. <laughs> um, mine is, my number three is this, that uh, my non-negotiable would be... Guys, if you enjoy videos like this, please help us out. Give the video a thumbs up. Help out the algorithms. Help out or do that with me. I mean, you can do that with me as well. Awkwardly, I get similar views on my videos to what Paul and Morgan get, and I have like a quarter of their subscriber base. 
Their, their channel's not doing as hot as it used to. Maybe just Jimmy not covering them as much has been super helpful. I don't know, we'll see. Other people get to see be intimate. I appreciate it. My number three is that this person is not pressuring you to be intimate. And with that... That one I agree with. No, no, no. That one I actually agree with. I agree with that one 100%. There are plenty of people who are asexual, who are sex repulsed, uh, who have just had a variety of things happen with them, uh, or people who, for one reason or another, do value their virginity. There are plenty of people who do not want and do not need to be getting into a sexual relationship from the get-go. And there are plenty of people whose needs are not wholly sexual. Like, I, I actually have to agree with Paul there. As a, as a person who's demi, even my attraction to somebody is going to be based more on personality. Having too much sex and not having enough actual quality time being spent with that person will cause me to become unattractive. It will cause me to not want to be with them anymore. This is, it, it's, it's very weird to be in one of those situations where I actually have to agree with Paul. Weird. They actually believe, like not just maybe, you know, <laughs> lip service, is that the right word? Yeah. But they actually believe, and it's clear, that saving sex for marriage is a big deal. Like that. Okay, no, that one I think is dumb. <laughs> that is what they're standing on. No, I believe that sex is to be saved until marriage. So you, you had, you were so good. You were so good up until that point. You were doing so well. I, I believe what you said. I agreed with you. And then you changed it from person not pressuring you to be intimate to they are actively saving sex for marriage. Nope. I, I no longer agree with this one. The idea of saving sex be, uh, for marriage. While there are people who want to do that and I can't stop you from doing that, I would just advocate that the scenarios you get in when you do that are people who are so desperate to fuck you that they are willing to legally bind themselves to you just just so that they can sleep with you. And then now you're both stuck. You may find yourself getting into a marriage sooner than you otherwise would because both of you have raging hormones and you desperately want. I I, I do not agree with the saving sex before marriage as a, as a hard, fast rule because there's so many ways in which that fucks up a marriage. Pressuring you to be intimate if they're pressuring you to compromise boundaries that you have made clear that are biblical, I would say uh, non-negotiable, out, out. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, granted, I wasn't amazing. Like, I don't think that I was like pressuring you to do things, but I was definitely struggling. You, you were wanting to be more touchy. Yeah. You were wanting more hugging. You were wanting more holding hands type stuff, but it wasn't like you were like, Paul, come yeah. on, let's have sex. No, Paul, definitely. let's do sexual acts. Yeah, no, 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 definitely not So that. I guess there's a little gray area in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you see what I'm saying. And all in all, like, I did respect his boundaries. It was just hard sometimes. <laughs> and they were my boundaries, too. Like, I say his, but, like, they were mine, and I did deeply... That's the thing. We can set up boundaries with one another. We can know that they're there. Hormones are a thing. Hormones are a thing. Desire to save sex for marriage and save all sexual acts for marriage with him, so... And somebody got their second ship! Love it. Morgan, real quick. <laughs> As I was thinking through these, I was like, all right, you know, I got my three. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, my goodness. I have a handful of others that I want to share. Yeah. So I do have one bonus one. And also, oh? if you're good with it, mm -hmm. I think we should at least do a part two and call it uh, six more non-negotiables in Christian dating. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you guys should get the actual definition of non-negotiable down before you do that second video. I think that there's more that I'd like to share. <laughs> but my bonus one would be this. Tell me your thoughts on this one, Morgan. Tell me your thoughts on this. Okay. My bonus would be, <laughs> it's a non-negotiable or whatever you call it. They cannot have a serious anger problem. Mm -hmm. Good. You know what? I'm a little iffy on that one, but I think I actually agree. I think that anybody who you get in a relationship with should be able to handle their own temperament so as to not become an abuser. I I actually think I agree with that one. I there is something to be said about somebody who has an anger problem but they are on medication or who has an anger problem and they are going to therapy actively, but no, I unless they fuck this up in, in the second round, I actually agree with that one. Yeah, I think that's really good, honestly. Anger is not something you want to mess around with and it leads to very can lead to very serious issues in the future. And yeah. it can be one of those things where you start dating them, you see it early. Oh man, this this person has an anger problem. And then they they have an outburst, it's ugly, then they apologize. And you kind of get into this cycle, I feel like, mm -hmm. of, well, he's apologized, he's gonna do better, or she, mm -hmm. and then the anger strikes again. Yeah, no, I agree. This is the I so I I 
I agree with this one because I've lived it. I, I agree with this one because I've lived it. One of the things that I went to therapy for, and I know I don't talk about the things I went to therapy for a lot on the channel, just mention the fact that I went, but one of the things I went to therapy for was I had some self-destructive uh, angry tendencies where I would lash out in ways that were not productive. Uh, when uh, Nymphia, our cat, died uh, years ago, I made a hole in the wall when that happened. Like, I did not know how to handle my emotions, so I lashed them out. They never lashed out at people, but they were still lashing out. I was not being productive with my anger. Therapy helped a fuck ton with that. So, yeah, if somebody actually has an active anger issue, I, I kind of I kind of have to agree with Paul and Morgan here. I don't like it when people I don't like make good points, but having Having lived this point, yeah, I I can get it. I can 100% get it. Um, and it's it's just not good. So I would say nip that in the bud. If it's something where it's like, man, this person is a godly person and they're struggling with this. This person has so many things I'm looking for, but there's an anger issue here. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we said with the PORN, give them a chunk of time where it's like, I'm not going to be in a relationship. We can maybe relook at this in six months and see if you overcome this. But if you haven't, if you're not taking this seriously, um, that's non-negotiable for me. It's just there's just too much at stake with with you and then your future kids. You know? Definitely, yeah, yeah. You really gotta think about that. Um, and you know, saying all of these, it's like it can maybe come across kind of harsh for someone who maybe struggles with anger or for someone who is struggling with PORN but is trying to work through it. And it's like one, I hope that this maybe like challenges you, encourages you to like keep going, like work at it, better yourself, lean on the Father to really like bring freedom to your life in these areas. But also like to anyone who's like, ah, oh, but like I really like this person, but they struggle with this. Like I don't want to be mean. Like shouldn't I show mercy? Shouldn't I show grace? And there are times. This is good to show those things to a person. But when you are thinking about marriage, when you are thinking about raising children with this person, like it is okay to be very strict and have non-negotiables. The dating. And you wouldn't have to have those non-negotiables if you weren't always thinking about marriage. If you were thinking about, if, if you were having more fun with dating as opposed to dating for explicit purpose, then you probably wouldn't find yourself in this situation where you're even having to make non-negotiables. I found some things in this video I agreed with, which is rare for a Paul and Morgan video, but I also found a lot that I deeply disagree with. And I don't want to cut off the video here, but I kind of have to because Growlithe is, Growlithe is telling me that I need to because she wants to go outside very, very badly. So this is where I'll throw it to you guys. How did you feel about their technically seven non-negotiable? Are there any that you disagree with me on? Are there any that you think that they were off base on? Uh, how do you feel? Let me know in the comment section below. I get it, Growlithe. I will take you out in just a moment. As always, everybody, hit the like button if you haven't already, subscribe if you haven't already, and insert end of video tagline.